All right, so it's six o'clock. Thank you for joining us for our Bluffton High School dual enrollment information night. Um, we have representatives from TCL here, Sarah Kane and um, Ms. Francine Marks and from USCB, Zach Evans, and they'll share information about their programs. We'll go ahead and get started. This is um, recorded and we will be able to upload it to our Bluffton High School dual enrollment webpage within a few days. All right, good evening, everyone. Um, to echo Ms. Cox's sentiments, as well as those of the Bluffton High Counseling Team, welcome, welcome, welcome. We're so excited to have you here tonight to learn a little bit more about the dual enrollment programs at TCL and USCB. Um, what we're gonna do tonight is give you a quick overview of what dual enrollment is, the possibilities you can explore, and kind of how it can impact your future both in a great way and potentially a negative way, even though we really don't see that very often. Um, with me tonight is Dr. Francine Mars. She is our Dean of Culinary Hospitality Programs over here at TCL. There's some fabulous program updates that she's gonna be able to share as well as some exciting opportunities for our students. So without further ado, we'll go ahead and get started. And then there we go. So some of you attending here tonight probably are familiar with dual enrollment already. You may have had an older sibling go through the process, a friend, a teammate. But for those of us who are brand new to the experience, dual enrollment is a program that allows you to incur both high school and college credits simultaneously. And that can look a few different ways. The main reason we see students pursue dual enrollment is to gain transfer courses that they can use on college transcripts for bachelor's degrees. So any core classes like English, math, science. But what a lot of our students are starting to do is use CTE or career and tech ed classes to fulfill elective credits on their high school transcript. Students in Beaufort, Collin, and Hampton and Jasper counties can participate. Um, our programs grow in year by year. So we'll kind of go into what makes dual enrollment a right choice for you if this is something that you're motivated to do? Because as much as I would love for as many students as possible to come to campus, take classes with us, or even just meet with us and talk about programs, I want more than anything to make sure you're ready to do so before you start. So there are a few key traits or characteristics that we look for in a dual enrollment student that kind of determine your success as a college student overall. The first is motivation. So if your student stays on top of assignments already, if they kind of have a plan for studying, keeping their lives together, whether it's juggling extracurriculars, academics, community organizations, everything else, that is a great thing to have at a young age. And that's kind of difficult to develop. It definitely takes time. But the number one reason why we see students fail is that they just lose their drive. They stop coming to class. They stop doing their assignments. They stop communicating with the TCL staff, their instructors, their high school staff, and it just kind of gets messy. So we definitely need to make sure that we're looking at motivation as a key piece of prep for college success. We also love when a student's reflective. So I love when a student can tell me in our first meeting that they write the best paper you've ever seen, or they can take any calculus problem and just solve it like that. That's really impressive to me because I'm not a math person. So if you're a calc guy or a gal, good for you. But even more than those strengths, I love when a student can tell me their areas for growth. So maybe you struggle organizing your thoughts or even just organizing the structure of papers. Maybe you're like me. Math has never made sense. You can kind of avoid it as much as you can. If you know where those areas for growth are, that is what allows you to be proactive, which is that third key trait that we look for in a college student. We can't help you if we don't know there's a problem. Students are often hesitant to either reach out to their instructors, their school staff, or even us and just say, hey, I'm kind of having a problem here. What can I do? Where can I get help? We love those questions. We wish we saw more of those questions because it means that you're working and actively participating in class to the point where you want to succeed. If you're shy about reaching out, please don't be. We really don't bite, at least not that hard, and we're gonna make sure that you are successful and have the supports you need to be successful. And the reason why we kind of look for these traits is that you are starting a permanent college transcript. This follows you no matter where you go. 
in some ways that can be great because if you knock your dual enrollment classes out of the park, you're going to have four-year colleges scrambling to accept you because they can see that you can handle college level work. And you're opening yourself up additional scholarship opportunities because now you have the college GPA to compete with college freshmen and sophomores for those scholarships. Conversely, if you get D's and F's in your dual enrollment classes, if you withdraw semester after semester, that's a red flag to four-year schools and even two-year schools. They're going to look at that transcript and say, oof, the student may not be ready for us just yet. We're going to defer for a year or two, and then we'll come back and talk. It also impacts your FAFSA financial aid eligibility. So when you do that FAFSA application before your first year of college, after you graduate from high school, if your college GPA is below a 2.0, you are automatically knocked out of eligibility for federal and state financial aid. So as, like I said, as much as we want everybody to come and take classes with us, I want you to be ready before you do because there are permanent consequences to dual enrollment. So now that the heavy kind of conversation's over, why should you come to TCL and do dual enrollment? We have small class sizes, similar to what you have in your high school. In some cases, our classes are even starting to cap at 23 or even as low as 19, whether you're in person or online. We do that so that you can get to know your classmates, get to know your instructor, because you're gonna be with those instructors and classmates quite a bit if you start with us during your junior year or even your senior year. And also allows a smoother preparation for the future. So when you graduate from high school, you've got those TCL dual enrollment credits under your belt, you're gonna go off to your four year and have a much easier time than a student who didn't have that experience. Cause you know what exam leak looks like. You know how to communicate with college instructors. You know how to order college transcripts. You know to, how to track your progress on a college transcript. A lot of first time freshmen don't have that opportunity and they end up having a rough first semester and then our spring semester over at TCL is full of these students who had a tough time at their four year and had to come back home and have those comforts and familiarity and safety in order to move forward. And the best part is that it comes to you at no cost. TCL and Beaufort County have an agreement that covers the tuition fees, textbooks, lab kits, any culinary supplies. So you guys can enjoy all of this at no cost out of pocket. So in order to participate in TCL's dual enrollment program, there are a few eligibility requirements you need to meet. We look for a 3.0 GPA on that 4.0 scale, English one completed with a B average or higher. And then if you're interested in taking any math or science classes, you have to have algebra two completed with a B average or higher. Now I am gonna add a disclaimer. Our eligibility requirements may differ from your school district or school. So anytime that that happens, we defer to the school or the district's requirements just because they're your primary institution. If you're interested in taking any career or tech ed classes, so things like cybersecurity, hospitality, baking pastry, any of that good stuff, we're just looking for a 2.5 GPA on that 4.0 scale. Now, if you don't meet the eligibility requirements for your preferred track, that does not mean that your journey is totally over. There are a couple of different methods you can use in order to move into that preferred track. With the approval of your school counselor, you can either provide a letter of recommendation from a current or former teacher, or you can take TCL's AccuPlace or Placement exam. Make sure you talk to your counselor about what option would be best for you and what best suits you as a learner. So to go over our options for students a little bit further in depth, the transfer track are basically freshman and sophomore level classes. There is a universally articulated list of 86 courses that we kind of refer to. That way you're sticking with classes that will transfer to any public four-year or two-year school in South Carolina. Now that's not to say that they won't transfer out of state or to private institutions. We just can't guarantee that they'll transfer to private or out of state. A quick success tip that we like to give to students is save all of your college syllabi for every single class that you take. You can always do a credit appeals process with a registrar if you find that credits are not accepted at your next school. And we can talk about that process a little more in depth at the end. As far as career in tech ed, you have quite a few opportunities that you can explore. We have about 18 to 19 programs that dual enrollment students have access to at TCL. Some of the heavy hitters recently have been programming, cybersecurity, small business entrepreneurship, 
and then hospitality and restaurant cook skills or culinary. We've also recently gotten baking and pastry arts approved. So students are able to do those classes at our culinary institute as well. And speaking of culinary, I'm gonna turn it over to Dr. Mars. Hey everybody, hope we're doing well tonight. Uh, so I am Dr. Mars, I'm the Dean of the Culinary Institute of the South. So it's very nice to meet all of you. Uh, at the Culinary Institute of the South, we, all, we have programs uh, we have three associate degree, one in culinary, one in baking pastry, and one in hospitality, in addition to four certificate programs, um, two in culinary, one in baking, and one hospitality. Uh, and each one of those can actually be done at the high school, uh, like at ACE, or at our Culinary Institute of the South. Next. All right, so why CIS, right? So I tell everybody a little bit about my story. A lot of people don't, they're always told to go on a four-year track. They need to go to a four-year school, uh, but not necessarily that's the truth. So with culinary, with um, any sort of community college or, or even CTE program, you have an opportunity to make a lot of money uh, and trades I think are where it's at. And that's just me. Again, I never thought I, thought I would be going to uh, a four-year school at all, and now I have a doctorate. So, you know, moving forward, just because uh, you may not like high school or you may not think it's a good fit for you right now, just because uh, maybe that's not, like like I said, not a good fit, but you may find something that you really love to do, and then all of a sudden, guess what? Now you're, you're moving forward, getting a, a four-year or even maybe a master's into it. Uh, again, you have to figure out what's, what's right for you. So we have dual enrollment opportunities, so it's a great opportunity for you to figure out if this culinary baking or hospitality is what you really want to do. We have very low tuition costs. So if you do decide to move forward and pursue it and actually get your associate's degree, you can um, after the whole uh, dual enrollment credits expire or when you graduate. We have a brand new state-of-the-art facility. You actually can come see it on our April 6th open house, which is coming up very soon. Uh, that's going to be from 10 a.m. To, to 12 p.m. But brand new school, uh, again, we've only been open about two years. We have huge industry demand. In fact, Hilton Head is actually the number one island in the United States. Um, and Beaufort is actually named number of the top top 10 towns in South Carolina as well. Um, so huge, huge, huge industry demand in the area, not just in Beaufort, but Hilton Head and amongst all the way around in, in multiple counties. Uh, we have seven different program options. We have stackable degrees and certificates, a lot of you know events, hands-on learning, um, opportunities to work with uh, our faculty as well for, uh, for an additional hands-on learning outside of the classroom. A lot of donor community support. We have online, on-campus classes. We even have flex uh, scheduling as well, which means that you can come to class uh, or if, say you're missing a class, like if it's a, le a lab class or I mean a lecture class, you can actually then go on and watch it later on in, the, in one of the lectures. Uh, which means you actually get credit for it, which is really kind of a cool thing. We have a culinary club, regionally accredited. We have great transfer partners, uh, USCB being one of them, in addition to employer partnerships and internships. Next. All right. So Hershey Entertainment, you can go to Hershey Park. I've had students um, go to Disney. You can do Cedar Fair, which is also now Six Flags or going to be Six Flags. Key West, Margaritaville, not only the like Latitudes uh, retirement facilities, but also Margaritaville restaurants all across the country. National parks such as Yellowstone, Grand Canyon, Glacier National Park. Um, you can go to Alaska, New Orleans, Myrtle Beach. You can go to Scottsdale. I mean, pretty much the world is your oyster wherever you want to go. And then lastly, our partners. So we have uh, two plus two opportunities with Johnson Wales uh, for hospitality in addition to USCB. Uh, with articulation agreement, again, with Lander University, if you want to go into business management. And then employer partnerships, we've got some really great partners in our area that we partner with, Montauk and Little Bluff, Disney's Hilton Head Resort, Surge, Sea Pines, Omni, Weston, uh, and Merritt Vacation Club. I always tell people, too, like, if you go on and you do your internship at Disney, which I call the mothership down in Orlando, you can then come back and transfer and work at the Disney um, Resort here on Hilton Head. And then from there, you actually be able to transfer over, which is really cool. Again, lots of really, really great benefits. And again, if you're really interested in culinary, bacon and pastry or hospitality, if you want to kind of dip your toe in the water and you want to figure out what if this is really what you want to do, dual enrollment to me is the best way to start out. Um, and then also, if you want to come check our check out our facility, you can do that. Again, open house April 6th from 10 a.m. to noon. Thanks so much, Sarah. Thank you, Dr. Mars. 
So if y'all are feeling inspired, whether it's to come and do transfer classes with us or to jump on the culinary train, because honestly, who doesn't want to work at Disney and get that free Dole Whip? What you can do is apply online to TCL as a dual enrollment student. That online application is a key piece to get you started in the process and entered into our system. From there, you're gonna get the dual enrollment packet from your school counselor, and they'll work with you on getting that unofficial transcript as well. Once you submit and complete that packet back to your school counselor, you'll confirm your registration when I come to campus in April and register students on site for the summer and fall semesters. Something important to keep in mind is that dual enrollment students cannot register themselves in classes, nor can they withdraw themselves from classes. In the past, we've had students add classes, drop classes, kind of without letting anyone know that they were doing so, and it affected their progress toward high school graduation. I would be devastated if any of you were knocked off that high school graduation track. So that's why we have that rule in place. Just a couple of things about the online app and a quick glimpse. Make sure you're creating an application account with the student's personal email, not their school email. Beaufort County School District email and TCL's application system are not very compatible. They just don't mesh well. So please make sure you're using a Gmail, Yahoo, anything like that. And make sure also that you're selecting dual enrollment for your admit status. If you select any other admit status, your app won't come to me and I will have no idea that you applied. To give you a glimpse of what the dual enrollment packet looks like, you're gonna have a Beaufort County School District agreement that you're gonna sign. That form also has to be signed by your parent, school counselor, and principal. From there, you're gonna have a TCL dual enrollment agreement, which is separate. The TCL dual enrollment agreement has a FAFSA waiver included. Students, you unfortunately, due to not graduating from high school yet, are not eligible for any FAFSA related benefits. So like federal aid, like Pell Grant or anything. So please don't do a FAFSA. We cannot accept your FAFSA and we've had students accidentally do them before. So no worries. That is just something to consider about the dual enrollment agreement. You're gonna complete a dependent residency form. This is what determines your tuition status at TCL, whether you get in-state, out-of-state. Please make sure you provide all required information on that form. And if you have any questions about your residency, let me know. We're always happy to walk students through that process and help. The third form you're gonna complete for TCL is an information release or a FERPA waiver. So when students come to TCL through dual enrollment, we legally have to recognize them as adults. Their right to privacy shifts solely to the student. So parents, guardians, if you want access to your student's information, students have to complete that release or FERPA waiver form on your behalf. From there, you'll do a dual enrollment registration form. That's something that we can do together when I visit campus in April, and then any other school-related forms. So let's say you get enrolled, you get registered, what do you do next? The first thing you're gonna do is check that personal email for a registration confirmation. When I put you in classes, I'm gonna turn my computer around to you, show you the email we have on file and say, is this still good for you? If you confirm that, I'm gonna send you an email that has your schedule, a link to sign up for orientation, a link to set up your TCL email and other accounts, and a link to reserve your textbooks. If you hang on to that registration confirmation email, it makes your life so much easier. So please make sure you're checking your email diligently for that registration confirmation. Once you get your TCL email information, go ahead and set it up and start checking it daily. This is gonna get you in the habit way before August of just signing in every day and reviewing your communication. TCL email is the primary way that I'm gonna contact you, your instructors will contact you, and any other TCL staff member will connect with you. So make sure you have that ready to go. You can even download an app and have it on your phone. Just do whatever makes it easiest to check it daily. Speaking of orientation or referring back to it, you are strongly encouraged to attend an orientation session at TCL. You can either come in person or attend a Zoom orientation. All of those dates are already available on our website and they're all gonna be held in July. So please make sure you sign up for the orientation session that best suits your schedule. You'll also need to reserve your textbooks. So because Beaufort County takes care of the tuition cost and that textbook cost, you don't have to go on Amazon or Chegg and try to find your textbooks, but you do have to reserve them through TCL's program. You're gonna get an email to that TCL email account from Course Ready saying, Hey, so-and-so, here's your materials for fall 24. Click here to reserve. You click, you're reserving, you're done. 
then make sure you're checking your TCL email for that course ready email. So that way you know when those textbooks are ready. From there, it's standard student expectations. If you sign up for an in-person class, make sure you're going to those in-person class meetings and you're completing your assignments in a timely manner. There are no assignment extensions. There's no such thing as makeup work and there's no extra credit at the college level. So please make sure you're turning in your assignments on time and you're meeting those assignment guidelines. We get that life happens, of course. So if you have extenuating circumstances, please let your instructors know and they will work with you. And then the last point, which trips students up the most, you're gonna have two academic calendars, one for TCL and one for Beaufort County. Our academic calendars don't line up. We start school after you guys come back from summer break and our breaks do not line up. So make sure that you are aware of where those calendars differ because if you're out for Beaufort County and you're trying to live your best life, which I encourage, I'd be doing it too, but you have class at TCL that same week, you still have to go to your class at TCL. So a couple of quick questions that we get from parents, from students, before we wrap up our part of the program tonight. What are the costs associated with the program? What would you be looking at if you had to pay out of pocket for dual enrollment? If your student was taking two classes, which is the recommendation, they'll get set South Carolina Lottery Tuition Assistance, which is the only form of financial aid that dual enrollment students can receive in the state. When you factor in SC Lottery, with our $80 per credit hour tuition rate for standard dual enrollment students, you're looking at about $100 for two classes per semester. However, every student's case is different. So if you guys decide to leave Beaufort County for whatever reason and you want to participate in dual enrollment, let me know because we are going to have to have those conversations. And then, of course, how is dual enrollment different from taking AP classes? Don't you get a college credit regardless? AP courses are taught by your instructors on your high school campus. Sometimes they're a year long, sometimes they're a semester long. You go through the class and then you take an exam regardless of when you took the class in May of every year. If you get a three or higher on the AP exam, then you get college credit, but some schools don't accept a three. They'll only accept a four or five. If you get a one or a two, then unfortunately you don't have that eligibility for college credit. Whereas with dual enrollment, if you take your college class at TCL and you pass, then you get the full credit. So a couple of deadlines to keep in mind, especially on the TCL side. Our registration deadline for fall, just because we're kind of looking at new students primarily, is Thursday, June 20th. Because we're expanding quite a bit and we have the orientation sessions happening each week in July, we are unable to take late registration requests for students. So that Thursday, June 20th is a hard deadline. Our fall classes are gonna start Monday, August 19th. And then of course, Beaufort County has separate registration deadlines. So if their deadlines are earlier than ours, then we are gonna uphold Beaufort County's deadlines because they are your primary institution. But of course, if you have any questions, concerns, just because I know it's a lot of information to take in at once, please feel free to reach out. You can reach me by phone or by email. I bounce around between schools and campuses quite a bit, so email is usually the fastest way. But if you give me a call and leave a voicemail, I will get back to you within 72 business hours. And with that, I'll turn it back over to Ms. Cox. All right, thank you very much. And now we have Mr. Evans from USCB. Um, Ms. House, can you give Mr. Evans the ability to share his screen? Yeah, I think he should have that. Let me know if you don't. I think I've got it. <coughs> All right, are you able to see my screen? Yes. Perfect. So good evening. My name is Zach Evans. I am the Assistant Director of Recruitment for the University of South Carolina Beaufort. So I am excited to be with you all virtually tonight to talk about another option for those of you that are interested in dual enrollment. Let me just... Oops. Oh, what I just did. Okay, I'm just get this way. Okay, so the first question that I want to pose for all of our students is, 
is dual enrollment at USCB right for me? So just some questions to consider. Are you 16 and a junior or senior? Do you have a 3.0 unweighted GPA? Are you a high achieving student? So are you a student that is constantly trying to go above and beyond with your schoolwork and your academic progress? Do you maintain quality academic performance and are you looking for a new challenge? So dual enrollment, whether at TCL or at USCB, will be a new challenge um, for you in terms of entering more of a college environment. So just thinking about how you personally reflect on new challenges that you may face and would you like to get a head start on your college career? So if the answer is yes, then dual enrollment might be a good fit for you. So how to enroll in dual enrollment with USCB? The first step is obviously to apply to the university. So you can go onto our admissions website and on the website, you'll see a button that says apply now. Once you click that button, you'll be able to go through the application process. So the first step is if you have not already, you're gonna create an account if you have never applied to the University of South Carolina Beaufort before. If you have applied before, use your existing account. You only need to reapply if you have not enrolled in classes in the previous term, which would be spring 2024. So you're going to click start new application and you're going to select high school dual enrollment 2024. All right, Mr. Evans, um, yeah. I don't, on my side, I'm not seeing where uh, the slides are going forward. Is that just me? Okay. Is this better? Now we see your okay. desktop background. Perfect, thank you. I've never used Zoom before and <laughs> um, I've definitely been a Teams person. So thank y'all for letting me know because it's also splitting between all three of my computers. All right, so perfect. So again, I'll kind of recap on this. So I'm okay. going to create an account if you have not applied before. And if you have applied before, you're going to use your existing account. So you only need to reapply if you have um, enrolled, if you have not enrolled in the previous class, which was spring 2024, you're going to click new, start new application and select high school dual enrollment 2024. All right, real quick, it's not on that slide. It's on your, it's just showing your icons on your screen. Oh man. Okay, here we go. Third time's the charm. Is that yeah. better? Yes. Okay. Yeah, you'll need to go from, uh, start from current slide. From current slide, try that one. Gonna, yeah. And then resume or just manually do it. Okay. Can y'all see the screen there, the one that says step one? Yes. Okay. Okay. Let me see. The one that's popping up, is it saying the, as the first bullet term, summer 2024 or fall 2024? Yes. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Awesome. All right. Now I'm, I'm caught up. So, okay. So um, when you do your application, you're going to select summer 2024 or fall 2024. Um, from your application type, you're going to see where it says high school concurrent. That's just another way of us saying dual enrollment. Um, your intended major is going to be non-degree. And then we do ask that you use the application fee waiver code, USCBDE. So University of South Carolina Beaufort dual enrollment. Um, our application deadline for our students is going to be April the 1st, 2024. So the next step that you'll need to do is submit your required application materials. So the first material that you're going to need to submit to USCB is your high school transcript, which will be submitted by the high school. We are not requiring SAT or ACT scores for this um, enrollment period. So you do not have to worry about submitting your test scores. Um, we just need to have your transcript. Um, we do request your high school permission form, which will be submitted by your counselor that will be sent over to us. And then on your FinZelp portal, you're going to do the pre-registration information form. So whenever you do set up your pre, your FinZelp portal, please keep up with your username and your password because you will be using that a good bit. Um, so your pre-registration information is going to include two pieces. It's going to, first, you're going to submit your proof of citizenship. So that can look like there are several different things. So it could be your South Carolina real ID. Um, U.S. passport, certified birth certificate, permanent resident card, or certificate of naturalization. In addition, you're also going to submit your immunization record, which is your measles, mumps, and rubella, your MMR2 doses, as well as your meningitis vaccine. Um, so for some of our students that may be in the process of getting their meningitis vaccine, we do have a waiver code. So if you have not completed the meningitis vaccine or have not yet to do so, um, it is optional, so it can be declined with the waiver, and we would send that to you if we determine that you need that waiver. We are requesting that this be in April the 15th, 2024. So after you've gone through the process and you've been accepted, 
you're going to start going through some additional stuff. So kind of like what Sarah was echoing earlier, you're going to want to check your email daily. Um, you will need to claim your VIP ID, and then you're going to log into your USCB email. So as you start shifting from the admissions process to starting classes, it's going to be important to keep up with your USCB email and check it regularly. So if your professors are reaching out with any information about their class, canceling class, checking in on you, or any sort of communication that comes from the university, such as if classes have closed for whatever reason, that's going to be sent through your USCB email. So make sure that you are actively checking that daily. We do encourage you to meet with your school counselor to discuss your course options. So weighing out what would be the best option for you in terms of dual enrollment, whether that be taking classes that can satisfy your high school requirements, or if you're thinking about going to a particular field and wanting to get started, taking the classes that would be approved to do so. We are doing a virtual session with the University of South Carolina Buford Advising, so that way you can learn more about your class options. This will be done virtually through Teams on May the 9th, 2024. So when all our students that have been accepted for dual enrollment with us have been accepted, we would send out that team's invite then. You are going to complete a dual enrollment course preference form for only for our fall 2024 um, dual enrollment students. So this dual enrollment course form is going to list the classes that are currently available for registration. So on here, you'll be able to see if the class, so let's say for instance, if it's English 101, you'll be able to see the different sections that are offered be able to see the modality, meaning is this class offered in person or is this class offered online, the times that the class is offered and who the instructor would be. From there, from that course preference form, you're going to list your first choice, your second choice, your alternate first choice, and your alternate second choice. And that way, once you've done that and you do go through the process of registering for classes, the academic advisor and the Office of Academic Advising can work with you and say, these are the classes that you had wanted to take but here's the classes that are optional. Some of your classes may show up that you can register for that you wanted on your course preference form, but there is a chance that you may not see those classes that you're looking to take as an option. And we'll talk more about that in just a second. So um, your dual enrollment course preference form will be submitted through your FinSup portal and it is due on June the 4th, 2024. So step four, you're gonna register for classes. So you're gonna make a registration appointment to meet with a USCB academic advisor. So for our students doing summer dual enrollment, um, the priority registration period is April the 22nd through 24th, 2024. For fall, it is July 29th through August the 2nd. These dates are subject to change, but right now they're holding firm. The last day to register for summer would be May 17th. The last day to register for the fall is August the 13th. For our students registering for the fall, classes start on August the 20th. So after you have the last day of registration has occurred, you will have classes starting a week later. The University of South Carolina Beaufort will send your class schedule to your high school. And I do want to stress the importance of this last bullet. Course availability is not guaranteed. So as you think about your dual enrollment options, if you're a student that's really wanting to get English and math out of the way, um, there is a chance that we're not going to have those courses. So as you do your course preference form, you may see some English options. I'll be very transparent. Math options are going to be limited if they're even available. For our dual enrollment students for the fall, we are sure a math professor and they're currently teaching every around the clock. So math may be very slim to none, just to be transparent. Um, so as you do your course availability form, it is important to consider some of your other options, whether that be a fine arts class, history, social sciences, possibly taking a natural science. But we will work with you in terms of when you do your course preference form. That's why we have you do it with your first choice, second choice, alternate first choice, and alternate second choice. So that way academic advisors can be able to see what you're hoping to take and what your backup plans would be. And if for whatever reason, what you're looking to take is not on your first, second choice or alternate first and second, your academic advisor will work with you and talk about some different options to see what would be best for you from there. So some additional things to consider, dual enrollment coursework counts towards your continuing eligibility for the South Carolina Life Scholarship. So let's say that you're a student that does dual enrollment now, and then your freshman year of college, you've gone up to Clemson and you are studying engineering. Let's say you had a little bit of a rougher go your freshman year, maybe you're sitting at a 2.8 or 2.9 GPA. And then when it comes time to recalculate your life scholarship, your dual enrollment classes are factored in and you did extremely well, you made all A's in those courses, that can jump you up to be able to keep your life scholarship eligibility. The reverse is also the same. If you're a student that maybe did pretty good your, um, your freshman year of college at Clemson and you're sitting on a 3.0, 3.1, but maybe you took a couple of dual enrollment classes and made C's or even D's in those courses, 
that can bring down your um, eligibility for the South Carolina South Carolina Life Scholarship, which can mean you could possibly lose it. So kind of what Sarah has echoed as well, these courses are going to be very important and do have lasting consequences in terms of your whether you do well in the course or whether you don't. Dual enrollment is intended to supplement a student's core curriculum from their high school, and dual enrollment students are enrolled in courses with traditional college students. So the professors are not going to know whether you're a student at Bluffton High School. Um, all they're going to know is they have a roster of students that are taking their class, and they know your first and last name. So just keep that in mind as you go through the dual enrollment process. Your professors will know that you're just a student in their class, but they're not going to know that you're dual enrollment. Um, again, to echo this point, students should consider all general education courses as options, not just English and math, um, and do some research about the requirements for your future college plans. So maybe you're a student that knows that wants to go to the University of South Carolina or Presbyterian College or Clemson University, and maybe you're a student that already knows what you're looking to major in. For most schools, if not all, you will be able to see their university bulletin or their catalog on their website. And you can be able to compare what those prerequisites are. And maybe if you're willing to do those additional steps, do the research and then be able to see based off of the course preference form what is available. That way you can try to see based off what you may need for wherever you're looking to go to school versus what we're able to offer for dual, dual enrolled students, what your options are for registering. So the University of South Carolina Beaufort General Education Curriculum and here's to the USC System Common Curriculum. So that's just a very fancy way of saying that us, USC Aiken, the University of South Carolina, and USC Upstate, we all adhere to similar competency categories for your general education part. So that's typically six credit hours of English, three credit hours of speech, six credit hours of analytical reasoning, AKA math, three credit hours of foreign language or culture studies, seven credit hours of natural sciences, three credit hours of social or behavioral sciences, and three credit hours of history. So a lot of schools, even outside of the schools in the University of South Carolina system, follow a similar guideline, such as schools in Georgia and even the University of North Carolina um, University system. So as you think about your dual enrollment options, maybe considering taking a speech or maybe if you want to take another foreign language, that can also be some options to consider based off where you may be looking to go um, once you enter your freshman year of college. So common minimum course requirements for college admission, just so you know, as long as, as far as from the University of South Carolina Beaufort standpoint, we're looking for four units of English, four units of mathematics, three units of laboratory science, two or three units of the same world language, three units of social science, one unit of fine art, one PE or ROTC, and two units of electives. So typically when you're applying to college, this is a very common example in terms of what, what schools are looking for when you are applying to see if you've completed those. So your dual enrollment cost savings, so the Beaufort County School District is covering the cost of your courses as well as your textbooks. So we showed this particular slide just so you can see the um, cost savings for dual enrollment. So for our South Carolina residents, they're typically looking at for two credit hours, um, $2,500, almost $2,600. Dual enrollment students are paying $396, but for the Beaufort County School District dual enrollment student, you're paying zero. So again, this is just to show the cost effectiveness of, do, of doing dual enrollment um, which can be seen either from us or for TCL and how advantageous it is from that standpoint. So just important information for Beaufort County School District students. Students are only permitted to enroll in two classes per semester um, and one class in the summer. Beaufort County School District will purchase textbooks and you will order these textbooks through the campus store. Beaufort County School District will purchase a parking pass for each student. So now it's time to prepare for your first day. So you're gonna to wanna to review your class schedule. So definitely take the time to see where your classes are located. Maybe you are taking a class in person and maybe that course is offered at eight in the morning on Wednesdays and Wednesdays or at 8.15 on Mondays and Wednesdays. And it's offered in library 267. One thing to consider before classes start is actually coming to campus, taking a tour. It could even just as well be a self-guided tour where you're walking on campus to be able to get a lay of the land to see where your classes are going to be located. So that way, when you come on your first day, you're not scrambling trying to figure out where your class is and it just creates additional anxiety that's not needed, um, as well as your location of your class. You're gonna to wanna to set up your campus technology, your self-service Carolina. So that's gonna be another way to be able to view your schedule. On your USCB email, if you haven't done that, like we talked about in the first five slides, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you're doing that now because it's gonna be very important. And then you wanna make sure, <coughs> excuse me, that you can access your Blackboard account. So if you're a student that's doing online courses, Blackboard is gonna be your essentially your classroom. If you're a student that is taking classes in person, you're still gonna be using Blackboard pretty daily. 
Um, you're going to access your syllabus in the course in your Blackboard account. You're going to turn in assignments on Blackboard. So it'll still be a very important integral part of your time at USCB. You're going to request your parking permit and then you're going to order your books. So ordering textbooks, you can order them through the campus store. Um, your campus store will not have textbooks on site. So we're not a bookstore per se, we're a campus store. So we have a lot of cool merchandise that you can purchase, but we won't have any actual textbooks in the store. Instead, all textbooks will ship within 24 hours to 48 hours. So you'll need to actually go to the website for ordering your textbooks and order your textbooks through the books, through the campus store. It is free on campus pickup on all orders, and you will use the BFT sponsorship for payment. So a predetermined credit is put on your account. So we typically advise the campus store to put $300 to $350 on your account. And let's say kind of what Sarah was saying earlier, maybe you're taking that lab science class and that kid alone is $300. And once you're doing that, considering your other books, maybe you're exceeding what your limit is that we have. Please do not go ahead. And again, please do not go ahead and try to order that textbook off Check or Amazon. The county will cover your books. You just need to reach out to admissions to let us know that you're having an issue and we'll work with the campus store to make sure you have enough money on your account. If you, for some reason, decide to purchase that textbook on your own, instead of waiting to hear about from us to give you some additional guidance, you will be responsible for that book and it will not be reimbursed. If your credit is not, a predetermined credit is on your account. Um, if you purchase materials not required, um, you will be billed by your school or district. So if you're someone that's just really interested in Spanish and decides to order a Spanish textbook, even though you're not taking a Spanish course, when the school district receives the list of classes and what books were um, purchased for your courses, and they see that on there as a book that you did not need, you will be responsible for paying that back. So students' rights and responsibilities, um, again, attend class regularly. Don't ever think about your professors are going to have possibly differing opinions in terms of their attendance policy. Professors may require you to be in class every day, and you may have some professors that uh, view students in college as adults and are not going to hold them to an attendance policy that is on their own accord. Um, don't think in terms of that regard. Come to class every day. It's only more beneficial to you to be in class to participate than it is to skip class. Come to class prepared and adhere to all guidelines and all assignment guidelines. So one thing typically that happens in college classes is your professor is going to do a walkthrough of the course and may even walk through your syllabi. Um, and it's important to keep up with your syllabus for the course so that way you know exactly what is due. So let's say within three weeks of starting class, your professor has said, okay, I've graded all of the papers that were submitted in Blackboard, and you're like, what paper? I didn't know we had a paper. If it's in your syllabus, then it is expected for you to know it. So making sure that you are having really good time management skills and really keeping up with those deadlines. Treat all members of the USCB community with respect and abide by the USCB honor code. So again, this is just a breakdown of important dates. So again, application deadlines for the summer and for the fall is April the 1st, 2024. All required application materials, including pre-registration information form, permission form from the high school and high school transcript, will be due April 15, 2024. Um, virtual session regarding your preference form will be on May the 9th, and preference sheet deadline is June the 4th, 2024. So during this process, you may have some additional questions. So if you do, please reach out to me or Nancy Reading at admissions at uscb.edu or you can call or text the 843-208-8055 number um, for any questions you may have. And just to reiterate, you may have a lot of questions during this process. We would much rather you ask a lot of questions, that way we can be able to assist you, than you not ask any questions. So do not ever feel that you're reaching out to us and asking a thousand questions and feel like you need to apologize for it. That's why we're here. There's a lot of things that are gonna be happening with a lot of deadlines. So we wanna be able to help you the best we can. So make sure that you're reaching out to us more so than not if you do have any questions. And I will turn it back over to Ms. Cox. All right, thank you very much. Um, I know that was a lot of information um, tonight from both TCL and USCB. We want to let the parents and students know that the counselors are here for support. Um, I um, help the counseling staff with the paperwork part of the dual enrollment process. Um, so as you're de determining is dual enrollment a, a fit for you for next year, um, once you decide uh, which path you would like to take, um, TCL or USCB, the next step will be to pick up the Beaufort County School District um, dual enrollment form from the counseling office. 
Um, once we receive that back and you will indicate your, your college on there, then we get going with the remainder of the paperwork that's required by the college. All right. Ms. House, do you want to add anything? No, I just want to say thanks to everyone for um, coming to the, the Zoom meeting, and we look forward to helping. And if anybody has any further questions, you can put it in the chat, or you can come and see me in guidance or your counselor. Okay, well, thank you very much. And within a few days, we'll have this uh, meeting recording posted to our website, along with the um, information with the deadlines and stuff that's already on our uh, Bluffton High School dual enrollment webpage as well. Um, and you'll be able to find the information there and you can stop by guidance and ask any questions you may have. We have a question in the chat. Okay. okay. Okay, so for dual enrollment students, what's the maximum and minimum amount of students of cor uh, courses a student can take? Okay, so um, the first semester of dual enrollment, a student may enroll a maximum of two courses. If the student is enrolling at USCB, the student will have an opportunity to take one to two courses each semester, maximum of two, but you are eligible to take only one at USCB. If the student decides that they're going to take classes at TCL, the student um, has to take a minimum of two courses. And after the first semester, if the student does well with dual enrollment, they can um, take up to four classes thereafter. So first semester at TCL, two classes, after the first semester, a student can take two, three, or four classes um, the sub subsequent semesters. All right, do we have any other questions? All right. I don't think we have any more questions. Thanks everyone for their time tonight and for providing all the information to our parents and students. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Thank you all. Have a good evening. Thank bye you. Bye-bye. Thank you all.